Um, so this, these trays I'm using are very cheap and they break, so I have to be kind of careful yeah. how I pull this loose so I don't break the trays. And I have them doubled up because they're so flimsy. And instead of washing the trays every day, I've started just spraying them with a little bit of bleach and letting whatever's in there stay. And it seems to be as good as washing them. So that's one thing I made that should save some time. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the seventh day. Uh, seventh day of growing. Mm -hmm. okay. Seventh day since they were planted. They were planted seven days. And we'll plant some after we're done here. Let's see, let's see how that goes. And this still isn't the best uh, because we're getting some roots not coming all the way through, like in the middle, so you have loose seeds. Um, that might have to do with how much I'm watering them on these last four days. And the bleach spray is just to inhibit any kind of mold growth? Yeah, when, when uh, I've tried not washing them mm -hmm. at all, and sometimes the first go around it'll look kind of alright, but if there's kind of a film, a kind of a, it's not greasy, but it's just, just a, so if you wash the trays and let them have six or seven days in the sun, then that, that, that would be well, would that work okay too. That would probably do all right, but I don't have all that many trays to be leaving six yeah. days worth of trays. Yeah, yeah, you know, out. Um, so how many trays do you need to run a process like this? Well, like right now, I'm feeding about five, ten, fifteen, about twenty trays, and there's seven days and only six of them have trays, so six times 20 is 120 trays, and I haven't doubled up, so that's 240. That's a lot of trays. Yeah. Uh, and these tra trays are like 88 cents a piece. Okay. I just got away from those, that system, which is a heavier duty tray that were about three bucks a piece. It didn't have holes in it, and I drilled holes only on one end, so I had them slanted. That was what this frame was about. Um, and there are things that I just didn't like about that system, so I've gone back to flat, holes already in all the way around, and um, see how that works. I had I had used these holes all the way around before, and I thought the slanted thing would be better. And I don't know this one. There's a bit of a smell to it, like it's starting to be moldy. I don't actually see any mold, but well, that doesn't smell too bad. Smell like something somewhere. Um, this stuff that isn't growing, that's these these empty seeds that were in the middle. If they're not growing and they're sitting there in wet for seven days. Ferment. They're likely to be souring, fermenting, growing mold. Kind of Couldn't so, you put holes down that middle row? Oh, there's holes all in it. No, down this. Well, that's Isn't that uh, that's where above. Sitting? That's above. I mean, the the water uh, would drain off of that gotcha. and go down. Into the... And and I think that has plenty of holes, but. Um, I'm thinking they're just, the, when I'm watering, I'm watering a, either a little bit too long or a little bit too often. 
because they don't dry out enough to make those roots go down mm -hmm. looking for water mm -hmm. and pick up those seeds in the middle. Just in the middle, the rest of it seems to be all right. It's just kind of in the middle, so I probably need to slow that down. So get to the watering, how long do you, I mean, how many trays do you have here? Two. Well, there's like 20 for each day. There are five, only five, 10, 15. I had, I think, a four here, so 19 today. Looks like it'd be 19 tomorrow. Um, so how long do you water them for? Okay. I've got this, the ones that are in this, in these four days. Um, I think I'm watering six minutes twice a day. And the water just comes down there, goes into the top one, flows down through that and to the next one, through that one, to the next one, through so that one, to the next a one. Sprinkler? It just it just comes out straight. Yeah. Um, each pan. Once it hits there, you know, it kind of disperses. So when after it comes down the first one, it comes out these different holes instead of in just one sprout. And here's a tray that I haven't doubled up. So with. would you say in the perfect world, Paul, if you had just Let's just say, for instance, just one section sitting there and a sprinkler system went on for six minutes or one level. I know it's physically impossible to have all that in one area, waste of, waste of space and everything else, but in a perfect world, would that work better by just having one section lengthways? Yes. With a sprinkler system for six minutes? Well, you wouldn't do it for six minutes. The reason I'm doing it for so long is so that it can run Drip through like if, if it only has to get to those top ones it could run 30 seconds that'd be wow. fine okay yep because that would that would get that first one i just need to run it long enough to get that it'll get through that one through the next one through the next one through the next one still have stuff to go the the sis the company australian company that does sprinklers and they've been around forever and ever water for and have a sprinkler on each level yeah. And I don't even think they have holes in their trays. Yeah. They put the, the water on for 11 seconds every hour. Hmm. So they just water it enough for these seeds and this, that. Yeah. So no excess, doesn't run off anywhere. And they get all that they need yeah. in those 11 seconds. So. Cool. Uh, so here's one that I hadn't doubled up yet. So, are, are y'all thinking about doing this? My, my wife has been talking about doing this. This wife right here. This one. That very one. For a long, long time. And we never had the, well, we never had the time to investigate this. And the reason why I was keen to come and look at this is because, A, you've done a lot of this yourself. And I, and I always listen to people that sign their own checks and have done the hard yards. I, I, I get always very worried about listening to salesmen trying to sell you a product that have only actually sell the product and never physically used it over a long period of time. Right. And if you talk to people that have used it for a long period of time, they usually have got the kinks out and can tell exactly what they find that works and doesn't work. Well, I, I've, I've been doing it the cheap way, which, isn't the best. I mean, I, I have this old system. I just have air, house air conditioner that isn't made for being in such a humid climate all the time. These little drugstore heaters that also they might last a but season look. or or so, fifteen bucks a piece. So um, this may sound a silly question. I don't know, but if you had a relatively nice, even climate, could this be done outside to a certain level or not? Uh, it could be done outside uh, in India or some country like that. You see people doing it outside. But the temperature has to be moderated. Because if, if, it, if it gets too hot, like here in Texas, I don't want it to get over 73 degrees in here. Mm -hmm. And you have to have it about 60, at least 62, 3, 4, 5, just 
to think it's warm enough to grow. So anywhere between 60 and 73. Is it, maybe is not it, quite down to 60. Maybe yeah, I okay. want it a little more hard, a little harder than that. In Fahrenheit. Yeah. Uh, if you have it outside. I just don't, you, you couldn't regulate that temperature. Right. And if I had this outside when it's 80, 90, 100 degrees during the day, I just don't think you'd be able, the mold would just be everywhere, mm -hmm. I think. The mold? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you know, if, if your climate is like Hawaii, where it's like 70 something, 60 or 70, throughout the year, all day. What, is that, in, what is that in, in the hour, Farrell? What, what? 35? Hmm, I don't know. I'll have to look it up. But, 30, I've spent 30, a lot of yeah, 30. time and trouble trying to make my system better. And if I had a system that was all set up, that had its own environment, all controlled, everything, I think it would have saved me lots of headaches. Mm. And uh, at the time when I did this, to get a system, I was, I was trying to get the capacity for about 12 horses. To get that size system at that time, from the system that I knew about, was about fifteen thousand dollars, and I thought, I "Can do that? That's just too much." Mm -hmm. But so I bought just a rack, and it's not this one because I've completely redone a rack and trays and pumps and and uh, valves and stuff, a whole system without the room for three thousand dollars. So I tried to get by cheap, and. Um, I got it going. Mm -hmm. I, I made fodder. I made pizza. My horses have had something to eat all the time. But I've had lots of headaches. I've, I've been dissatisfied enough with it to have changed the systems now five times. I mean, major changes. Um, and I have always thought. If I had it to do over it, if I didn't already have this invested in this right here, and were to start over, I was thinking I might just get a system that's already set up, ready to go, you plug it in, turn the water on, and it makes it. Um, but I... Well, you can only do what you got to do when you have the amount of capital around you at that particular time. Right. Early on, this, the, the company that I got this from was FarmTech that were very new to, to fodder. They're, they're a farm and garden supply company, have been around forever and ever, and make these plastic buildings. Uh, what you call them, Greenhouses? Greenhouses, storage things, yeah. different things. Um, so, and they sent around a catalog. Well, they had this catalog, it's $3,000, $29.99 for this system. At a time in 2011, when we were in, I think, like the third year of terrible drought, they had these terrible fires. It's so hot, so dry. There was no hay anywhere in Texas. Feed you could buy, but it cost an ungodly amount. Any hay you got was terrible hay, and it came from out of state somewhere. Um, these guys left to their place, they almost had to evacuate twice before they left to come here. Oh, y'all in the fires there? Yeah, I've, I've been reading something about. Mm -hmm. And this is y'all's summertime. It's hard for me to keep that in mm -hmm. mind. I see people showing pictures, and it's they're in the hot summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Christmas and... Uh, so, so, tell me, uh, one ton of barley, one ton of barley, how long would that last you? Okay, what I, if, if, if my horses aren't getting anything from the pasture, 
Um, I want to have my horses get 20 pounds of fodder per day. Uh, I figure my horses are basically a thousand pounds and uh, that's two percent of their body weight and the feed companies say horses should get one and a half to two percent of the body weight in whatever you feed them hay, grass, feed per day. One and a half to two percent. So I'm at two percent and I wouldn't mind feeding them a little bit more but that's just where I got that number. I figure my barley that I buy in the seeds I, f I when I got this I was trying to make it be eight to one. If I put a pound of barley I expect to get eight pounds of, of oh, fodder. And I did a little bit. I used to weigh every tray before and after. I used to keep charts and all this mm -hmm. and figure out. And every, every once in a while I'd get up to eight. But I could guarantee I'd always be at, at least five to one. So I figure on the low side I'm getting five to one. Barley to Barley water. from seeds. And um, so when I buy a ton of seeds, 2,000 pounds, it should make 10,000 pounds of fodder. Oh, five tons. Mm. Or five tons. Okay. And you're feeding 20 pounds per horse if they're not getting any pasture. If, if there's pasture, like I don't have to feed them any in the summertime or mm -hmm. spring when there is fat pasture. I usually do feed them at least one scoop just to keep them eating and keep the system going. But um, when I think there's nothing, I plan to give them three trays per horse. Three trays per horse. And with, these trays are probably a little bit, that's probably a little more than 20 pounds. That's daily, so morning, lunch, and dinner, roughly. Well, I'd just give it to them once. Yeah. They have to. <laughs> they have yeah. to figure it out. Yeah, they have to figure out their eating schedule on their own. Um, so, however long you think they would last. Yeah. Um, so how long does it take for a horse to eat one of these? Um, right now, I'm giving these three, three of these each. And then in the evening, I'm still giving them some alfalfa and some other stuff. These horses that I just got that I'm planning to ride and sell. One of them's really skinny. Mm -hmm. and you know, trying to do stuff with them. The horses across the street, they only get fodder and they get whatever's left after I give these their nine. <laughs> so there was, I think, 29. No, no, no. 19. There were 19, so there'll be 10 trays divided amongst four horses over there. And they'll have that gone in 10 minutes. These guys will eat on it for about 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then they'll go off and meander around and eat grass. And they'll come back and munch on it some more. By this evening, when I go to feed them, there won't be any, any more left. But they don't eat it all at once, possibly because I'm feeding them more than they actually need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so introducing this to a horse that's been on see? hay and grass, Type they mown a fit what we call a 50-50 loosened grass bale of hay and a little bit of um, pellets or something like that. When you take them straight off the, the hay and put them onto this, no problems, or would you well, introduce it slowly? I, I introduce it slowly. First of all, because anytime I change feeds, I don't mm. want to change the whole abruptly mm. all at once. But Inevitably, they won't eat it. They won't touch it. They don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. They've never seen yeah. this stuff and don't know they're supposed to eat it. Even when you put it in their mouth, you know, they spit it out or whatever. Uh, so it takes a little while to for them to realize, hey, this isn't so bad and I can eat this. Once they've got that down, then they're okay. But it, it takes several days. And so when I'm doing this, 
I'll feed them whatever they're, they've been on and just a handful of this stuff. Or I might give them a handful of this stuff first and then if they finish it, then I give them the rest of the stuff. Then the next day I have two handfuls or three. I try to just switch them over within 10 days, make 10 days. Yeah. So a tenth of what they're going to get, and then two tenths, three mm. tenths, four tenths. Okay, so do you, you can do this with oats too? You can. And uh, they say the oats, actually we have more oats around here than we have barley. Really, yeah. Barley is kind of a colder weather crop and it's almost always comes from the way northern states or Canada. Um, but oats is a little slower growing and uh, I don't know, barley is what everybody used. That's what I started. When I started this, I was using half or a mixture of half oats and half barley because I was buying barley in sacks for $38 mm -hmm. for 50 pounds. That was just too much. So I would mix it. First, so I mix it with uh, oats sometime, mix it with Milo, maize, mm -hmm. you know what that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never mix it straight with corn, but those, like Milo and oats, we get that anywhere around here because it's grown. So the, you found that the, the, the cross of corn, I couldn't, I never thought of corn, but... Well, corn, corn, corn will work also. It's slower growing, so it take longer to get it started, but it, it would work. I think, just imagining this, I'm thinking that barley would give you more weight, more, more mass, than five days, six or seven days of corn. Mm -hmm. Maybe even of oats or other stuff. Yeah. But uh, you, you can raise other, you can do other things. Oats, I know people have done, and I have done mixers. But uh, when I was doing the mixtures, I couldn't tell the difference between the oats and the barley. Yeah. But, uh, Just went to barley because that's what everybody says mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what I do now is just get this kind of out of the way and then I set up my system to plant some more. And I just built these movers yesterday. I don't know if they're going to work today or not. So I need to slide these guys forward. Move one of those trays on the end of this tray. Take them out of that sink that's been, I would say soaking for, well, but I quit soaking. I've been rinsing them for one day. That are put in those, those trays. My door's in the way. And, and this is hanging up on this this other frame that I have. That if y'all hadn't come today, I would have had that out of the way. Leave room for this door. Okay, there's one up there. Uh, oh wait, oh yeah. I have to I think if I lower this that'll let this one come on. Okay, so see it's like that. So this has been not soaked. 
we started soaking. Some people say that's what you do. But I find that just rinsing it, this is 24 hours. So in 24 hours, yesterday morning, mm -hmm. I put loose seeds in here. Yep. Now, got them wet, and then every six hours, the, the drain in the bottom is open, so the water just comes in, and it goes right back out. So it just kind of rinses them once every six hours. Mm -hmm. In 24 hours, you've already got... You can see it, yeah. You've got, see, you got something showing in virtually every seed, and some of them are quarter inch, maybe even a little bit longer, already after 24 hours. So, And you've got a little bit of corn in there? or that just Well, the, I just get meal run. I don't get seeds. I get just meal run whole barley. And it comes from the mill. So they get a little bit of got some corn. Sometimes you'll find some peas or soybeans. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there's some little bitty seeds I used to find in here. Yeah. Um, Did you do black sunflower seeds at one point? I, I used to put yeah. black sunflower seeds in. I can't tell if the corn it has got a little bit starting to poke out or not, but. Uh, mm -hmm. See, this corn would be a little bit slower. Yeah, you can see it's just to take not, off. Yeah, it's just not there. Uh, and the corn that's in there isn't intentional. That's just what yeah what ran through the mill. Good to see that. Okay, so my old system, I put this put the trays on here and slid them across. And when I tried to do these this puller, it didn't catch on the trays. It went underneath because I had this elevated and so I, so now at least until I figure out how to make that work I have to carry these around and put them in all on this row well I'll put I'll put five on this row oh yeah Oh, from that from that column, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh. so what day are these up to? Okay, this is the third day. So that's after one day. This one is after two days. That's the and that night. one's the third day. I will uh how far up are we going? Uh well that's uh, just for that one. That's right there. That's all that one. 